Hey, what's going on everybody? Commander Crane here, and we are back with another Pioneer deck tech. And today, we're gonna be talking about Mono Green Stompy in Pioneer. This is a very, very special deck to me, and I'll kind of explain why in just a second here. But before we hop into the video, let me know in the comment section below at the end of the video, is there a specific card that I definitely should have put in this deck? Or do you have suggestions for upcoming videos? Just let me know in the comment section. So before we hop into it here, so this deck is, is pretty special to me for a couple of different reasons. So one, when I first started playing Magic, uh, this was a deck that me and my brother, shout out to the Common Kolb, um, we played this deck a lot. We really, really did. And obviously for those who know the thumbnail, this is obviously like the entire engine of the deck. But I just wanted to talk about this real quick. You know, we played this deck when... The creatures were much, much worse for the most part in this deck, and obviously as time goes on, we've been getting some really, really cool green creatures as additions for this deck, but like we played like Leatherback Baylots and Colonian Tuskers and stuff like that, and you want to know what? We liked it, and it was a lot of fun, and I know he still does play this deck in Pioneer, uh, which is really, really cool to see. So just wanted to mention that before we hop into here, just because this deck, it was really, really fun to make. So... The main card in this deck that's, I would say, the build around is Aspect of Hydra. One green, instant, target creature gets plus X, plus X until end of turn, where X is your devotion to green, which is super duper strong, especially when you're playing cards like these. Werewolf Pack Leader, Steel Leaf Champion, Old Girl Troll. They have a ton of green pips in their mana cost, which means Aspect of Hydra, we're easily going to be able to cast this for, you know, it's going to get plus 7, 8, 9, 10, depending on where we're at on the board state. This card is going to be such a good pump spell, especially when we're pumping it using cards like Steel Leaf Champion and Old Girl Troll. Steel Leaf Champion is really, really hard to be able to chump block. You know, opposing decks need to have a big creature to be able to block this. Or Old Girl Troll has Trample, so you can just trample through with the damage. It's really, really good. Or even Werewolf Pack Leader, you can use the pump spell for instance maybe on a troll and then you can get the pack tactics trigger it's really really good in this deck so these are the cards that have a lot of devotion to them but we have plenty of other cards which we'll talk about those in just a second but the other thing i wanted to mention is with this deck what really really makes it work is the strong one drops experiment one and pelt collector are awesome in this deck just because it's a fantastic one drop it gets bigger as the game goes on you know we play for instance you know uh turn one experiment one and then we go turn two werewolf pack leader boom this gets a counter then turn three maybe we play for instance a steel leaf champion or an old growth troll boom it gets another counter it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger as the game goes on and especially with poke collector if we start with that gets three counters then we have an aspect aspect of hydra we give it plus eight plus eight all of a sudden you know it's a, a it's a 12 12 trampler and it's just gets way out of hand i really love the these one drops the Dried Militant is also really, really good. Mostly, well, there's a couple different reasons it's good. One, because it's a green 2-1-for-1. One one. That's just fantastic in its own right. It's a really good card in the metagame right now, especially against decks like Is It Phoenix, where it says if an instant or sorcery would be put into Griffith from anywhere, exile it instead. It is symmetrical, but it doesn't matter for us. It's really good against a number of different decks in the metagame, but it's really, really fun. For instance, let's say we go turn one, experiment one, and then we go turn two, play another experiment one, and then a Dryad Militant. Now we have two two twos and a two one which can just kind of be insane that's so that's why i really really also like the dried militant in this overall one drops a plus huge fan of these so let's go and take a look at some of the other cards that we're playing these are the other powerful creatures i like avatar the resolute really really loves experiment one and pelt collector because it has region trample it's a three two for two that's already a super good rate but it enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each other creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it. So if we go turn one, experiment one, and then we go turn two, you know, for instance, maybe a keen eye curator, which we'll talk about that card in a second, you know, it gets a counter and then we play an avatar of the resolute boom and enters with at least, you know, just one extra counter, but that's still a four, three reach trampler for two mana. You know, that's just like a hypothetical. This card can come in with way more plus one plus one counters than advertised. So definitely huge fan of avatar of the resolute. And it's also important that it has two green pips on there, which helps our aspect of Hydra. We're also playing two copies of Key United Curator. I think this card, for a couple reasons, is just really, really good. It's a 3-3 three, three for two green pips. And then it has the fantastic activated ability there to be able to exile cards from a graveyard. And then if we've exiled four more cards, it gets plus four, plus four, and trample. So, okay, yeah, just becomes a 7-7. Seven, seven. Sure, seems pretty solid overall. It's actually funny. Common Colb and I, we were actually talking about this before I posted it. I was playing Kyrian Beast Caller, which in its own right is still a really, really good card. 
and he's like, man, there's got to be a 3-3 three, three for 2 out there that we could play in this deck. So I looked it up and saw this, and I said, oh, oh man, this is definitely the perfect card for the deck. So huge shout out to him for, you know, before I'd posted this, because I definitely like the Kenai Curator in the deck. And then rounding out our creatures, we're also playing two Ronus the Indomitable. Sure, it doesn't add green pips, but the card is just that good. 5-5 five, five for 3 with Death Touch and Indestructible, and then it has a really nice activated ability that works great with a lot of our creatures that don't have Trample. We can enable that. Also, just being an indestructible creature is just such a pain for a number of different decks. We get another creature with power for 4 greater, like a Steel Leaf, or we get a Kenai Curator that's, you know, got the plus 4, plus 4, or we have an Old Growth Troll. And then we just have this, you know, really, really hard creature to be able to answer. So definitely a huge fan of Ronus in this deck as well. And then rounding out our non-lands, we're playing four Audacity and two Tybar Stand. Audacity is essentially just a Rancor for our deck. That's pretty much why we're playing it. Enough said. Tybar Stand is just a fantastic protection spell. Hexproof and indestructible, and it can act as a nice pump spell. What's not to like? Definitely a huge fan of the Tyvar stand in the deck as well. So let's go and hop into the lands real quick. But the lands, it is super simple. Four layer of the Hydra, one besage you in 16 forests. That's it. That's the mana base. We're obviously mono green, so we don't need to do anything too crazy. I thought about playing Hashup Oasis in this deck. The only reason I didn't specifically was because a lot of our cards require a lot of green pips. And especially if we're playing against like other aggro decks like Mono Red or Rakdos or things like that, we can take a lot of damage from the Hash Oasis in this deck. So that's why I specifically didn't include it. But if you would like to, it's definitely not a bad card. And I definitely understand the addition. And then as our spicy basic land of the day. So this is also a little bit of a deep cut. The reason I included this forest is because when we had first started playing uh our it's actually funny our dad played magic back in the day he played in like the late 90s when magic was still very very new and i remember having a ton of these urza saga basics like it was most of the basic lands we had were from like this in like fifth edition and like Burcadian masks and such but i remember in my first green deck i ever built these this was the forest i liked the most so pretty much like all the forests in my deck were this specific one. So it's definitely a deep cut, but that's why I wanted to include this forest, which you can actually find old arena foils of this, which are like super duper pricey, but the card looks amazing. It is such a nice foil, especially with like the nice colors there and such. So a little bit of a deep cut, but that's why I included this one in my spicy basic land of the day. So don't go anywhere yet though. We still have to talk about our sideboard as well as some budget options for the deck. So sideboarding is really simple. I wanted to be really specific on what I'm playing in my sideboard, but if you ever want to change it up for yourself based on your metagame, always feel free to. So Tail Swipe, playing four copies of that just because it's, I think, the best uh, instant speed removal spell we can play in green currently. It's just fantastic. Enough said about Tail Swipe. Shaper Sanctuary, there's a lot of really cheap removal going around right now, like Fatal Push and Torch the Towers and things like that, mostly just because of how the, local, the, the metagame is shaping up right now. And, you know, I guess no pun intended. That's why we're playing a couple copies of Shaper Sanctuary. So definitely a huge fan of that as well. Well, I'm also playing a couple copies of Canker Bloom. I wanted a naturalized effect, but I also wanted it to kind of be a creature. And it's also nice just because the proliferate is not nothing on it. Because you can sacrifice it to destroy an artifact and jam it or proliferate. And obviously with our 1-1 one -one counter theme, it fits it pretty well. So definitely a huge fan of the Canker Bloom. And then I'm also playing Grafter's Cage and Pick Your Poison. Cage is just for... It's just a really good uh, sideboard card in general. Helps stop like the collected company decks, things like that. That's kind of like the big one. But it's also good against like Arclight Phoenix and decks that are trying to bring creatures from their graveyard to the battlefield. And then pick your poison right now, mostly because of the Rakdos Transmog deck. Obviously, if they put in a Trax into play, our creatures don't size up very well to a giant flying death touch vigilant life linking angel. So we're playing pick your poison to help clean that up. But in general, Pick Your Poison is just a really, really good sideboard card in general. So that's why I'm playing a couple copies of those as well. And then the last thing we have to talk about is the budget options, which, guess what? Swapping the Besaidu, that's it. That is the only thing in terms of like budget that you can really swap out. I mean, if you really wanted to swap out the two Ronuses, they go for about $4 a piece. That's pretty much it. That's the only thing. The entire list as it is right now, including the Besaju, is $76. So Besaju is like a $32 card, which is the is half the cost of the deck, which is, which is really funny to think about. Like, none of these cards are bad in this deck. The reason that this deck is so pricey 
or not pricey is just because it's just a bunch of solid green rares that are not currently seeing a lot of play in Pioneer, which doesn't mean necessarily that they're bad. You know, as Patrick Chapin, you know, once said, sometimes you have to play cards that are the, just on rate not as good to be able to make a deck synergize that is good. So, uh, you know, I had to quote that in there. But overall, I really, really like this deck. In general, if you're looking to play some Pioneer at your local FNM or with friends, if you want an extra deck just for someone to borrow, or if you're looking again to pioneer yourself, I highly recommend this deck because not only is it really, really cheap to build, but it's really, really fun. If you like green aggro decks, this is definitely the perfect deck for you. So let me know in the comment section below if you have a deck similar to this or if you do end up building this yourself. So that takes us to the end of the video here. Thanks so much for watching. The deck lists are in the description below if you'd like to check it out for yourself. Huge shout out to our channel members, Ralph, Matt, Arcadius, Ray, Gary, and Sarwanoki. If you're interested in being a channel member, it's only one US dollar a month. You get access to the exclusive Commander Crane Discord as well as other features here on the channel. So I'm Commander Crane. Thanks for watching this video and I hope to catch you in the next one.